I'm Rene Ritchie, and yeah, we got the first Apple TV back in 2007. The one that was based on a stripped down version of Mac OS Tiger. The one that shared the stage with the original iPhone. And we got the second one, the first one based on iOS in 2010. Then the third, the one that went from 720p to 1080p in 2012. After that, the Apple TV spent well, it spent some time in the desert, going through numerous false starts, from something that was like a DVR to something that was like a higher-end gaming console, to, in the end, the future of TV is apps. That hit in 2015, and then it got renewed to 4K and HDR in 2017. And then, since then, nothing. Despite all the leaks, despite all the rumors, just nothing and more nothing. Until now. Sponsored by Ting. Back on September 1st, Mark Gurman and Debbie Wu, who are currently ranked at 87.8% accurate over a whopping 343 rumors, and that's according to the Apple Track website, said that Apple was working on a next generation Apple TV, one with a better processor. And the processor widely rumored for this update has been originally the A12X, now the A12Z, the processor that's found in the current generation iPad Pro, which is the A12 chip from the iPhone XS, but with those extra CPU cores and extra graphics cores so that it can play better, faster, stronger games. And while some people already consider the current Apple TV overpowered with its A10X chip for just doing things like set-top TV box things, it does start to choke a little bit when it needs to composite HDR, when it has an HDR video that it's showing and it has to start layering things on top of that. And also Apple has Apple Arcade now and those games are only gonna get more complex and more demanding over time. So an A12X would give Apple more than enough overhead for any of the HDR stuff it wants to do, at least at 4K, and at least for now, but also the ability to play all of those upcoming Apple Arcade games and any tvOS games in general. And of course, my personal hope in all this, that Apple will reverse course on its current thinking when it comes to game streaming services, things like Xbox Game Pass and Google Stadia, and Amazon has just announced Luna, and realize that they, re that they aren't at all different from Netflix and Disney Plus, and they, they really are the future of gaming. It's just how gaming is gonna to evolve to be and that rather than try to force them into an old world app store model, they should embrace them. Apple should embrace them and make sure that all of their platforms are just the best way to play those games. You know, instead of being a thin client, being a real edge computing device that gives you the best possible silicon for the best possible native performance, even with all these cloud-based games. But I'll save that rant for a separate video, and if you want to see it, just hit the like button and we'll see how high it goes. Now, there have also more recently been some rumors about both this, both an A12X, A12Z based Apple TV, but also a higher end version, one that potentially has an A14X processor in it, which would be equivalent to the new iPad Air chip, the new iPhone 12 chip, presumably what would go into a next generation iPad Pro. And that would be, again, top of the line, current, latest, greatest silicon, but with those extra CPU cores and those extra graphics cores to just, to just blow up graphics performance entirely. And that rumor comes from Fudge, at Choco underscore bit on Twitter, who currently has a 90.9% .9 accuracy rating, according to Apple Track, but only across 11 rumors, because a lot of their predictions have been about future products like the iPhone 12 that just haven't come out yet. So wait, we'll wait and see how that all pans out in the future. But for now, what Fudge is saying is that Apple Arcade is getting big money poured into it, that they're currently working on titles that are aimed at rivaling games from Nintendo like Breath of the Wild, which is why, if I'm parsing this right, there's an A12XZ Apple TV, but also an A14X-like Apple TV, and even a game controller in the works. And this sort of ties into every higher-end gamer's fantasy about Apple. Now, it's worth acknowledging that Fudge also talked about Apple announcing Mac gaming machines, something that did not happen unless you sort of stretch the interpretation of Apple Silicon in general and Apple Silicon GPUs 
with the ability to access iPad and iPhone game catalogs as being gaming Macs, but I think I think most people wouldn't stretch it that far, or at least would wait and see what Apple delivers before enter, even entertaining the notion of stretching it that far. But I think it's worth discussing that Apple has explored this in the past. Like I mentioned in the intro, one of the things that they were working on before the current platform, the uh, tvOS platform, was sure a DVR version of the Apple TV that would be better suited for people who want to do large broadcast media consumption, but also a higher end version that would be better for gaming. But Apple doesn't operate the way that Microsoft and Sony does. And their idea of a higher end console, a console with a current generation iPhone or iPad chip would be to charge usual prices, usual margins on that box. And that would make the Apple TV cost more like what an iPad costs. There would be some money saved because it doesn't have a display, of course, but it would be much more expensive than even the current pretty expensive Apple TV box pricing. And Microsoft and Sony get around that, often it's selling hardware at cost or below cost and making up for it with game licensing and partnerships and, and other things, basically using the software to subsidize the hardware, where Apple's entire business thus far has been around using hardware to subsidize software. Like you buy a Mac or you buy an iPhone and you get iWork and GarageBand and iMovie and various other software just for free. So it's the inverse of a game console model. And I think Apple realized that if they weren't willing to make that sort of change, there'd be very few people who'd be willing to pay really high-end prices for a high-end Apple TV. But if this is accurate, maybe Apple is again uh, experimenting with this idea with putting cutting edge silicon into an Apple TV box so they can deliver cutting edge gaming. And there's a lot of people who think Apple doesn't get higher end gaming. And that's not entirely true. There are a lot of high end gamers at the absolute highest levels of Apple. The thing that Apple gets is that there, it takes less effort to make way more money at the casual side of gaming. If you just look at what's currently on the iPhone and the iPad, those are extremely popular gaming platforms. They make a ridiculous and obscene amount of money without having to worry about AAA titles or more expensive hardware or anything like that. And even then talking about Apple making a higher end game machine and using Breath of the Wild, which is several years old and running on the Nintendo Switch, which has never been about higher end gaming. It's been about the gaming experience, not the gaming specs. And even with something like an A14X system on a chip, something that's as powerful as what the next generation iPad Pro will be, when you compare that to dedicated gaming systems on a chip, like what AMD is putting together for the Xbox Series S, the even more powerful Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, it's, it's really tough to see how that plays out. And at the opposite of the high end, of course, is the entry level, something that Apple hasn't addressed at all in the Apple TV market yet. And at Google's latest event, the Pixel 5 event, we also saw them introduce the latest version of the Chromecast, which is this tiny little dongle, uh, little adapter you just plug into the back of any TV and it turns it essentially into a Google TV. Doesn't matter really how old it is, as long as it has the port, you can do it. And then you just get all of the Google Chromecast services, including uh, an Apple TV-like remote that has even chunkier, more tactile buttons, including a Netflix and YouTube button, if that's how you stream. And Apple doesn't offer anything like that. There were rumors a couple years ago, Aaron Tilley and Jessica Tunkel writing for the information, which Apple track scores at 90%, but only over 11 rumors. And this was back before Apple track started keeping count of those rumors. But the information said to get more viewers for its upcoming TV streaming service, Apple has contemplated going down market on its TV hardware and that they've had internal discussions about introducing a low price streaming dongle that people could plug into the back of their TVs, which is essentially what a Chromecast is, or similar to Amazon's Fire Stick, but we haven't heard anything about it since then, not anything at all. And I still think this would be great. 
Apple's current strategy seems to be making partnerships. They very early on announced a Apple TV app for Samsung's platform, which yeah, means someone in Cupertino is now writing Tizen apps, but they've also done it for many other smart TVs for LG now and Sony and Vizio and Roku boxes. And just recently, just last week, they announced a TV app was coming to Xbox and PlayStation. So you can watch your Ted Lasso or the morning show uh, or whatever on any of those platforms. And that's very different than making a hardware dongle that would just subsume those platforms. But I still think it's worthwhile because not everybody has modern enough versions, especially of those TV sets, to make use of those apps. So for example, my uh, LG t television set is a year too old, so it's just never getting that app but I have an Apple TV box. I'm willing to spend a couple hundred bucks on an Apple TV box. But for people who aren't, it would allow them to do essentially what Google is doing with the Chromecast, and that is turn any TV, no matter how old, into a modern Apple TV. And to me, that is uh, extraordinary value. And once the world stops ending and we're able to travel again, it's way easier to throw something like a Fire Stick or a Chromecast into your bags, even into your pockets, and travel with that so that your content, your experience is always with you. That to me is the whole advantage of things like CarPlay and AirPlay. It's so that you don't have to worry about other interfaces. You don't have to worry about missing your stuff when you're somewhere else. And again, Apple just has no answer to that yet. As of right now, the only way any of us can save any money is elsewhere. Like on cell phone bills, if you're at work or at home or just working from home right now with tons of Wi-Fi and don't see the need to pay dime one extra for your cell phone data or talk or text with Ting. Ting offers coverage on Verizon and T-Mobile. So no matter where you are, and if and when you go somewhere, you'll have more service options in more places. And it works with almost any phone, the slabs, the fold, the flips, just pretty much anything you can put a SIM card in and the average Ting bill is just $23 a month. And that can mean a lot of extra cash to put towards your next iPhone or your next Apple TV. And with no contracts, no commitments, and since you're watching this video, you can get a $25 service credit to try them out. Just bring your own phone, bring your own number if you want to. Go to renee.ting.com and see how much you can save and get $25 off, seriously renee.ting.com or click the link in the description and start saving with Ting. And clicking on that link just really helps out the channel. To learn more about everything Apple's announcing this fall, click the playlist above. I've got hands-on, reviews, breakdowns, everything. Just click the link and I'll see you in the next video.